everyone. Thanks for attending today's seminar. And uh, it's uh, afternoon uh, here local in Dallas. I'm located in Dallas, Texas. Usually it's a nap time, right? So people can take a nap or do something else. And I really appreciate you spending your time here and uh, hope you can uh, uh, find this uh, interesting and useful. And uh, I am one of the Aspire program event leaders in at and I have spent a lot of time with students uh, from elementary to all the way to high school, even college students. So, uh, and uh, that's my passion. And I think it's very important. Uh, you are the future of, you know, it's a, it's great. We, our future is actually depending on, on you. So uh, when to start preparation? That's a very good question. Uh, a lot of, I heard a lot of even parents say, say, say that, uh, you know, my kids are still 11th grade or 10th grade. It's, it's a little bit too early to talk about college preparation. So actually, college preparation started in 8th grade, not even ninth grade. It's 8th grade because accumulative grades start in ninth grade, and there's one point uh GPA, I mean, one point between regular class and AP class. So AP class started in ninth grade. And uh, now many of AP classes, there's pre prerequisition for pre-AP class, which started in eighth grade. So that's the reason why college pre preparation actually started in eighth grade. So it's never too early. There's a little picture here, so driving and uh, with the coach on the side. So the student actually is on the drive side, student drives. Uh, I would say college preparation is once in the lifetime. It's very, very important, right? And uh, sometimes we, we often hear people complaining, you know, the war is uh, not fair, you know, someone's more advantaged. However, there are two rules, right? One is 24 by 7. i never seen anyone got a 25 hours a day and a seven, eight days a week. No, it's only 24 by 7. The other one is you live once. No matter who you are, you live only once. So it is, it's a fair game. And it's a dream. I would say always dream big. Now, dream is between life and death, right? If you're dead, then there's no dream. If you're alive, you better have a dream. And the dream big. So how to make the dream come true? Then there comes the plan. Always have to have a good plan, right? It's make sure it's feasible, executable. And you will have short-term and long-term, you know, short-term could be daily plan. Every morning I woke up, then I uh, start my day, I start thinking, how should I spend my time today? How can I improve the process in, in, in my work? So always there's a short-term plan and a long-term plan. Again, go back to the picture previously, the student is always in the driver's seat. So it's, there's, there's no, no one can block you. The only person, uh, in this world can block you is actually yourself, right? So now, uh, I have done this presentation many, many times. And I would say Magnificent Seven is, uh, about those th seven fields or seven areas equally important. You just cannot weigh one more important than another. They are all equally important. So the first one is GPA. I just talked about started at eighth grader, right? And also class rank. So that's about 15%. Standard tests like SAT, ACT, uh, subject SAT or SAT twos, something like that. Community service. Leadership, 
Now, those two kind of related. I always quote myself a, a good follower. You know, uh, I'm not a great leader, but a, a good follower. I follow the leaders. So, and the leaders were not born, right? Leaders were, were made. So if you follow good leaders, uh, you learn from others. Uh, without you knowing, you could be a great leader. So community service, um, the reason why it's so important is you look at the tuition. Every year there's increase because there's inflation, there's a cost of living increase. So tuition always, you know, year after year, you, I can see if, for the last 10 years, it's, uh, you know, could say, a huge jump. And uh, why community service is related to tuition? Because tuition is barely, it just barely cover the cost of uh, open the door for, for colleges, for universities. So the universities, universities and the colleges, they, they are looking at uh, the return on their investment. So if the person is very smart and can easily get to a good college. However, is kind of selfish, right? So now that way, college or university didn't get much return from that person. If the person has a big heart helping others and the college and the universities can always count on you someday when you become financially advanced, you, you will consider to giving back. So that's the reason why community service is important. Another one is leadership. You are only high school students, right? Already shown that you that you have a great leadership. That will give a much higher chance for you to uh, giving back, right? If if uh, a, a person without a leadership or a person with a leadership, there's a huge difference there. Okay, so number five is recommendation. Now, recommendation is uh, is uh, mandatory, right, for college application. So three recommendations. One is from English teacher. So always be nice to the English teacher. Okay, so because that's one of three recommendation letters. Number two is either a science or math teacher. Science means biology, chemistry. Uh, Physics, right? And uh, math, of course, is, is the foundation of, of the science. Then essay. Number six is essay. Essay is, is showcase. Uh, show your personality, show your community service, show your leadership. Everything is embedded in, 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 in your essay. And the number seven is extra curriculum. Now, that it will include like uh, uh, if you're athletes, you, uh, you, you, you very good in running or, or, or you know uh, uh, play basketball, or volleyball, you know, uh, and also talented in uh, in certain areas. For example, uh, Intel every year there's a, a scholarship, right? So a competition. If you if you get into then yeah, yes, you you those are all the extra curriculum. Although it's not required by high school graduation, it, it is one of the very critical areas as well. Okay? So I call those seven uh measuring points call them magnificent seven. It used to be an old Western movie. So then we're going to break down for each area. Let's start with the first one with GPA and the rank. Okay, so this one I already mentioned earlier. PAP courses, that's the foundation. Now, I'm going to talk a little about the career trends. Give you one example. Uh, in 2002, we went back to Canada to visit because both, I lived in Vancouver for eight years and both my kids were actually born in Vancouver, BC, Canada. So 2002, we went back and I drove them to the mountains called Canadian Rockies, right? So if you look at here from US side, the Colorado, Montana, or those are Rocky Mountains, but the, uh, in Canada, that's even, even prettier mountain and uh, the water just air just so so pure uh, I was driving 
then、uh, I do afraid of heights. So I was kind of shaking.、Uh, and my kids look at the two of us just passing us the huge bus. They said, "Oh, look at the huge bus!" I said, "Shut up," <laughs> because I will not look at it down the cliff. You know, even you pay me one million dollar a month, I won't even take the job as a, as a bus driver for 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 like on top of the mountains. So, well, that that's so career trends is is kind kind of something you you are interested and you 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 are very very passionate. So then, you, actually, there's a test you can、uh, in in school you can always. To have a test, so if you are interested in that area, usually you will put in more effort into it, right? So I, I think that way you won't be suffering, even if、uh, it, it's a high-paid job. If you are not enjoying doing that, that that's no good. So make sure you、uh, you you pick the study field which you are very very interested into. Okay, so that's the the first area I'm gonna talk, and now the second one is standard tests. Now again, nothing is more or less than the other; they are all equally important, right? So standard tests are just as important as GPA. So there are two types of、uh, tests. One is SAT. The other one is ACT. The difference between those two is、uh, SAT is analytical based, which means it requires a little bit thinking. For the question, usually it's、uh, a little bit trickier. ACT is knowledge based. Whatever you have learned, if you can remember, you will be able to pass the test. For example, my son didn't do too well on, on SAT. His highest score was was only fourteen fourteen ninety, I think SAT, because back then they used twenty four hundred, right? Instead of now, it's going back to sixteen hundred for SAT.、Uh, there was writing in the in in my case in their college app, application time, I mean, at college、uh, time. So ACT is knowledge based. My son did very well. He did thirty five on ACT. So、uh, whatever he learned, he remembered, so he can take the test. So everybody is different, right? So just choose、uh, whichever you 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 are, you are most comfortable. So I think that's、uh, a good tip、uh, before even study, before even studying to,、uh, for the exams. So make sure which area you. You are you are most you have most most strength. So, PSAT is for national merit finalists, which、uh, I wouldn't consider too much because those are mainly for Ivy League schools or for some you know、uh, top rank schools. If uh, uh, just going to college or just ordinary university, then it, it's.、Uh, Not,、uh, I wouldn't consider this as very critical. But the SAT and the ACT, those are the, the requirements. And the subject SAT again, this is for a little bit high end, high end. So, for example, like、uh, Northwestern University, Vanderbilt, many of those, you know, not necessary, not necessary top tier, but、uh, it's a、uh, well known schools. They require three or more, like math, history, uh, li- uh, English literature, biology, chemistry. Now, for math, there are two different types subject SAT. One is、uh, subject SAT for math one. The other one is for math two. For certain colleges and universities, they only take、uh, math two. So. To be sure, if you're gonna take one of those exams, just wanna don't wanna waste your、uh, energy or effort, right? Just wanna make sure、uh, you you are on on the right track. Again, that's also related to your 
to the majors, which which means if you you're gonna go to pre med, then usually biology, right, or chemistry. If you're gonna go to physics or you know math, then then usually math. Or or if if you want to go to a very good uh, business school like Wharton, then uh, yeah, math, math one is required. So uh, those are the standard tests, and it's very important. And start early. My daughter, I think she started in fifth grade preparing every day about twenty questions because. That seventh grade is a Duke program, right? Cover the 12 states. So seventh grade will have one uh, SAT exam. So that's very important. If uh, if we want to go, go to a, a good college, then the seventh grade is very useful. So... Seventh grade, if take SAT, there are two very, very meaningful st- statistical scores. One is compared to the peers. So my daughter ranked the top 1% compared with seventh grade other students. And compared with college born, like seniors in high school, she's got the top 83. So, I mean, 83% percent behind her so top 17 percent so something like that that that, that's a a good start so that's the the second area about standard tests okay and there's always plan right i like i mentioned that my daughter started in fifth fifth grade prep practice uh, sat questions so community service actually uh i i just enjoy this so much I, I'm doing today and I, I, I again I have done this many times and that's all my part of my community service actually it's a reflection about the person right community service is is a is a is a mirror can see a person a very good reflection so like dedicated right I uh, I can do some other things today but I spend time just you know dedicated on this uh, webinar Persistence. Persistence is uh, is a very, very, very valuable uh, character. Like uh, nowadays, uh, there's a measurement for a, for a good leader, right? Grit. So just constantly doing something, even it's boring, even it's uh, uh, not that uh, high profile or, or under some spotlight. Just maybe just very, very basic jobs, and you're doing. Day in and a day out, persistence is is very important. Commitment. I I will say those are very uh, important characters for for a good person. Do not overcommit. Just say promise too much and can under deliver. Right. That then that, that that's no good. If you can't deliver, it, then uh, might as well just uh, give uh, certain rooms uh, flexibility. Right. If you cannot commit, but once you promised. Go ahead and finish it. Okay. So communication, 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 communication is the key. Because as human being, we, we, we are, we are not uh, living alone, right? We are living in a society where, with very, very high paced. So how you communicate with others, right? Just like when you're driving, you turn on the left turn signal, you, you are telling people, right? And uh, then you're going to make a turn. So communication is uh, even before all other actions, always take communi- communication as, as first step. The next one is about leadership. That's uh, good or bad. Kalaba Kal- Kal- Chairman, uh, I, I, I heard this, uh, many students going to be like, uh, uh, they uh, can create a club, right? then be a chairman or be a president of the club. Uh, the title is actually not that important. Real job, actually, now you form a club. What what did you deliver? What did you accomplish? Those are the, me- the, the key measurements, right? So club chairman is a good, good uh, title for, for leadership. 
So once you are uh, a chairman or, or president of the club, make sure you do uh, put your, your, your effort into it. Another thing is uh, working for non-profit organizations like United Way, March of Dimes, so on and so forth. There are many of them, right? I start volunteer with Junior Achievement in 2003, and uh, I'm here in Dallas. I have been on the scholarship committee for Great Dallas Boys and Girls Club since 2014. So those are the leadership positions. And again, that's not important. The main thing is how you how you deliver, how you do the real job and the responsibility. Responsibility, I mean, stress is attached to the responsibility. If you don't have responsibility, of course, there's no stress, right? And uh, those three, I would say, very, very closely related, right? Commitment, responsibility, commitment. Those are all related to stress. And uh, stress actually is is not really that bad. I, I mean, could be you can turn the stress in, in, into some kind of you know a force, right? So do some energy, do some work to to overcome some kind of uh, areas. So, and uh, the most importantly, from my personal experience, a good leader starts as a good follower. You start as a good follower. You look at others and. Uh, look at the great leaders and uh, just follow the leaders and without you knowing someday, somehow, somewhere, somewhat, you will become a leader. So uh, those are my point. Okay, let's talk about recommendations. Okay, now, before you approach to the teachers or counselors, right? So three recommendation letters, mandatory three letters, right? One is from English teacher. Number two is from math or science teacher. Number three is from the, the school counselor, right? So before you approach to counselors or teachers, make sure you prepare a good bio. Even if uh, the teacher's going to write a good recommendation, they know you well, it, it's good to have a good bio for them, for them to have it as a, as a, as a reference, right? So it's handy to, to, it's good to have. Then when they write recommendation, um, will reflect, I would say maybe 80 or 90% of you. So, uh, prepare a good bio is very important and do some homework. Now, some of the teachers, I, I, I I'm hopefully not offending some of the teachers, right? But uh, sometimes to make sure the teachers uh, from the students already graduated from high school listen to those and uh, uh, make sure that the teachers uh, will spend some effort to write a recommendation. Otherwise, if the teacher is is, is a well-known teacher, very popular in the school, however, the teacher is, is too busy, right? So maybe flooded with with all of the recommendations, and uh, now just do some homework. Then make sure uh, sincerely talk to the teacher and who who will be write a recommendation for you. So always give a heads up, give enough time. Don't don't do anything like oh so and so teacher, you know I need your help. Uh, I'm you know, in college application and the New Year recommendation letter by tomorrow, that's kind of uh, almost unreal. So always give enough time, at least two weeks, okay? At least two weeks, give, give, give the teacher enough time to write you uh, or, or the counselor. Give, I mean, the counselor, the ratio for public school it, it, is not that great, right? One counselor usually handle like hundreds of students. So uh, always give enough time, follow up. So give a heads up, then follow up. Because say I already asked uh, the teacher, the counselor, do a recommendation letter for me. Uh, actually, that's not. Make sure you follow up. Because sometimes 
uh, it's also a communication issue, right? You you feel like I already submit a request and uh, just waiting for the college, I mean, uh, acceptance letter. For whatever reason, if that recommendation was missing or never sent, then, uh, it, I mean, it's nobody's fault. Yet, it's your fault to start with because you didn't do a follow-up. Make sure, you know, in a very nice way to confirm Say, did you, I sent a, a request to you, you know, a couple of weeks ago and uh, just want to make sure you already, and then the teacher or the counselor usually would say, yeah, I sent that and I already submitted online. So something like that, and then just, just say thank you very much. And follow up means you also always write a very nice letter to, to thank the teacher or the counselor. Okay. So the next key area is Essay. I, I just love that. I'm my, just me, right? I'm not rich. I'm not famous. However, it's me. I'm not uh, proud of myself, but I'm not ashamed of myself either. So it's a true me, right? So just being you and uh, positive attitude. Every day to me is a gift. No matter it's sunny or it's rainy, Always a good day to me. So that's positive attitude and a good grammar. No misspelling and uh, make sure it's uh, uh, in good shape, right? Good grammar and no misspelling. Uh, negative, something like hate, jealous or something like that. You know, I don't like it or try to avoid. It. And uh, so challenge to me is always an opportunity. Challenge is always, challenge is a love, I, 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 is a good thing, I really love it. Yeah, those kind of controversial, but uh, uh, actually it's very easy to handle. Being humble is a good way, and uh, a humble person usually have very strong self-confidence. Because of humble, it doesn't mean you, 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 you are nobody, you didn't know much. Humble is a, a good attribute. And uh, when, 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 when you, when you're humble, doesn't mean you, you're afraid of fail. Humble more like uh, prepare for the worst and uh, hope for the best. So an essay is uh, a good reflection of a person and uh, of course the basics those are only the basics and you could write some something very very beautiful many years ago i, I think it's uh about 20 years ago i read a very good essay the girl she uh, eventually uh, she went to harvard uh, she wrote a uh, family trip to yellowstone so started in uh, describing nature about how beautiful Yellowstone is. Then talk about the family, how wonderful the family is, right? Parents support and a good time, spend good time together in Yellowstone. Then talk about herself is about how excited she, she was. She was kind of graduate from high school and going to college. Then uh, said, uh, prepare herself uh, for of the challenges ahead and uh, to uh, make a world better place to live. Things like that, when you, when you read it, you feel it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful essay and you feel it's got a power and, uh, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's real about the person's uh, experience. So that was, I would say, I have read, uh, Many, many essays. I think that one, until today, I still remember. So a good essay is very important. Extra curriculum. So like I said, uh, in sports or in music or in science, arts, anywhere, or, or some of the schools, they have ACDEC, you know, the, the national competition, right? So decathlon and uh, summer research. Nowadays, for a medical school, if you're gonna be in ma majoring in pre-med, uh, summer research already going some kind of uh, uh, hospital or some health 
healthcare related uh, systems. So summer summer intern is is very important for in, I mean in in, uh, in 11th grade. Of course, 10th grade will be even better. However, a lot of uh, institution they don't take 10th grade. So 11th grade is the best chance because starting in 12th grade, right? In uh, September, usually school starts immediately. Will will we'll start the college application. So the summer research in 11th grade is is critical. There are many many websites you can search for. National Science Foundation is is one of the one of the best. I would say uh, it's well known. Usually, uh, uh, not only only the funding, but the the uh, institution is so well known. So then. Uh, of course, then the scholarships, right? So in, Intel and uh, Siemens, so many uh, like Goldwater. Those are if you gonna go to medical field, Goldwater is 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 the best. Those kind of uh, extra curriculum is is uh, actually not extra if you gonna go to a very top school. So I will. Leave some time for Q and A, or you know, uh, any any question, so I can uh, drill down or in in depth, you know, talk a little bit further. Someone asked, "Do you recommend taking a science class even though you don't need another year of it for your senior year?" Science. That's a very good question. Now let's actually go back to about the trend, about how you feel, which major you're gonna you're gonna pursue, you're gonna go to. Uh, if you you are going to that field in science field, yes, please do so. Or if you try just try to bring your uh, score, you you don't really like it, don't do it, don't do it. Because even if you are very smart, you never know what's gonna happen for the for the for, for the exam, for the grade. So that's just, you know, uh, my opinion. So I would, I would say depends on, on your interest. If you, you have the passion, if you are very interested, please do so. Go ahead. There, there's never too early. However, if you're just going to try to uh, bring the grade, do, do for, go for the GPA, for that purpose, do not do it. So that's my answer. Can I get a letter of recommendation from my AP U.S. History teacher? Because I don't think I can get one from my science or math teachers. That's a little bit challenging. I don't think it's going to work because I I think it, it's very clear, clearly stated. You know, three recommendations for the counselor is one. English is one. Math or science is another one. Yeah, that's a tough question, actually. Now... You may also consult the college you're going to go to, okay? Specifically ask for that question for that college, saying, I'm going to be majoring in history, and I really love it so much. And I, I know your school is a uh, very top ranker in the nation in, in history. So uh, I'm going to ask my history teacher, write me a recommendation. Please let me know if this is feasible. This is, uh, the, the, uh, the, I would say it's uh, close to reality. You can try that and, uh, and do, don't do that on the online common apps. I think it's, uh, uh, it will, I don't think it's going to work. So, so only for a certain college or certain university, uh, you can approach them and make sure, see if it's going to work. Then once you got a confirmation, you, in, in your college application, make, make, uh, some kind of, uh, outline, just point out, say, I did this and uh, this is confirmed. And that way, uh, don't, you won't lose the, the, the opportunity because again, this is a,